Let's talk fundamentals, the techniques, routines and systems that you need in place if you are to be trusted to insert a foreign material into the heart of some of our sickest patients. Standardization and protocol are vital. We have a dedicated vascular access suite run by a very skilled nurse assistant. She handles the referrals and the logistics, comforts anxious patients, and she also fills the vital role of observer. If a guide wire flies off and becomes unsterile, or an operator is about to catheterize an artery, she will notice. With more than 60 doctors in our department, her role is extremely important. We have a checklist that helps both the operator and the assistant stick to the rules, and that keeps our patients safe. We have standardized sterile CVC kits, everything we need in one place, but nothing superfluous. The CVC infection rate at your institution should be close to zero. A good start to reach this very achievable goal is to apply proper sterile technique during the insertion. In our department, patients are pre-washed with chlorhexidine sponge. At this stage, all patients also have any hair removed from the catheterization area, so the patient is clean. But you also have to be clean. Wash your hands like a surgeon scrubbing up for theatre. Sterile gloves and gown, a hat and a face mask are mandatory. Next, prep the skin while the patient turns his or her head to the contralateral side. Start with a large area and make it smaller with each pass. What you want to avoid is making all this effort and then taking a last swipe from the outer perimeter to your puncture site, potentially pulling in crap. This is not sterile until it's dry and the drapes won't stick to wet skin. While the patient is drying, you prep your tray. When you drape the patient, allow for a large enough area to access the puncture site, the superclav fossa, and a backup location. I find that the adhesive two-parted drapes are extremely useful to achieve this, and uh, if you're placing a left-sided line, you may want to include the superclav fossa on the right side. The drapes should be large enough so a stray guide wire doesn't risk hitting a non-sterile area. Some guidelines call for a full body cover or a sterile sheath under the patient. I personally don't see how this is necessary, but you know, follow the guidelines and don't fight the system over this. Note how I fold the top of the drape in order to not completely cover the patient's face. It can get pretty claustrophobic inside there otherwise. This patient has extremely sensitive skin due to chronic steroid medication. You can easily rip the skin apart if you're not careful when you remove the adhesive drapes. We suggest that you use gauze pads for protection, and similarly, gauze can be used to cover wound dressings or other catheters that uh, will be covered by the adhesive drapes. Here's another alternative how you can minimize the adhesive area which can protect sensitive skin. Next, optimize your ergonomics. I never stand at the head of the bed anymore. The reason? It's cumbersome. Stand by the side of the patient's bed where you have your equipment easily accessible and the ultrasound machine within your line of sight, lined up with your in-plane cannula. You also have equally good access between the subclav and the IJ if you use the oblique technique. This also goes for in theater. Next, let's talk catheter length. The optimal tip location is in the lower superior vena cava or the caboatrial junction. This is several reasons. The blood flow is high enough to dilute toxic infusions like potassium chloride or chemotherapy. The risk of thrombosis is low, and you get an accurate CVP and central venous saturation measurements, and the catheter tip is unlikely to perforate the vessel wall in this location. If the line is only to be used a couple of days and we don't need CVP measurements, we sometimes accept an erroneous tip placement. 
For example, it has been shown that infusions running in a retrograde jugular line never shoots up towards the brain more than a few millimeters from the tip. It's generally safe. A normal-sized adult will usually be well served by a 15 cm catheter on the right and a 20 cm on the left. Insert the full length of the catheter. You can always retract it later, but it's not possible to push it in further if you need to. A special case would be the arrhythmia-prone patients. You don't want to provoke a ventricular tachycardia by poking the guide wire into the heart. See our previous video on the supraclavicular fossa view to learn how to measure the distance to the de desired tip location. Sometimes one size doesn't fit all. Is there perhaps any radiology available? In this case, the patient had an unexpected long distance from the right IJ to the heart and needed a 20 centimeter line on the right side. Whereas this 16 year old had a severe thoracic deformity and needed a 10 centimeter catheter. So, how long can you leave a central line in place? If it's properly taken care of, which includes never leaving blood in the lumen and changing dressings as needed so it remains uninfected, we've had patients with lines for several months. But you probably have strict guidelines on this, so see to it to follow those.